Hello again. Uh, today, as I discussed in the last uh, lecture, I will be discussing a couple of things. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the application of the forbidden uh, IFS or the forbidden zones in the IFS uh, pictures in the stock market. That's my first uh, focus would be. And the other thing I would be discussing uh, another interesting application of uh, iterated function systems uh, which is in literature uh, so these uh, two things uh, i will be discussing today uh, stock market uh, and uh, specifically uh, at this present time i will be discussing the effect of uh, uh, covid-19 on the stock market and how we can study these uh, effect uh, with the help of uh, the ifs with the help of the pictures uh, which we have uh, created in the last couple of uh, lectures. So today we will do that for the uh, stock market and we will see uh, how uh, we uh, do that for the international stock market behavior during the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is what uh, we are going to discuss first. Uh, so first of all, we will be seeing uh, how to compare stocks and uh, different indices by the driven iterated function systems so that is that will be our first uh, focus and uh, we will so what we did in uh, during the lockdown uh, again uh, we thought we did, did not do uh, much uh, research in other fields but we we collected the per minute closing prices closing future prices of uh, uh, for a 10 month period around COVID-19, five months before COVID-19 uh, when it was declared as pandemic and uh, five months after that. So we, uh, we collected uh, data from internet, uh, the closing stock prices for, for different countries. In fact, today I'll only show you one of the examples, but we did uh, do work for, def for several different stock markets around the world. So, uh, each uh, data point since we took about 10 month period and it, each weekend is uh, in holiday so five days per week so in 10 month we have about 20 weeks and uh, for per minute closing price each day has uh, uh, during the opening hours of the stock market you have about i think 600 points every day so total it is it had the each data set has about 20000 data points uh, so what what we so first of our first challenge was to divide the stock market price into the uh, four bins because for a square uh, for a for a chaos game played for a square unit square the driven IFS uh, we need four different uh, categories so how to categorize these uh, closing prices of a stock into uh, uh, into four different categories so what we did we looked at the 10 months data for several index futures like the index funds for different countries using every minute percentage changes how uh, every minute the stock prices are changing uh, and uh, we set the bin boundaries we uh, first of all we observed that this uh, stock market uh, usually tends to fluctuate uh, usually uh, between uh, hardly between plus 0.01 percent to minus 0.01 percent most of the time most of the time not uh, sometimes it fluctuates more sometimes it's less but most of the time it is uh, between plus minus 0.01 percent of the current value it's, remember it's the per minute percentage change it's not per day percentage change so it is very 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 low so as a first experiment what we did we looked at the changes in the index future and uh, we used zero centered bins with the following criteria this was our criteria if the market is has a large fall when the fall in the market was more than 0.01% so it's minus 0.01% of the previous value previous minute so we call it a large fall we call it we designate this data point to bin a bin b contains all the values which are within 0% to minus 0.01% so that is we call it a moderate fall then bin c is the moderate gain in the uh, stock so that is uh, just between 0 to uh, plus 0.01 percent of the previous value that is moderate gain and largely uh, lastly it is the very high gain in the market which is unexpected gain so a is the unexpected fall d is the unexpected gain which is more than 0.01 percent of the 
previous value. So that we call it LG or large gain. So we have four different bins. And as you, if you, if you remember, uh, we have these unit square. And so this is a square A, B, C, and D. So this is, uh, this, corres this corresponds to uh, large fall. This is moderate fall. This is, uh, sorry, this is, uh, yeah, this is moderate fall. C is moderate gain and D is uh, large gain. So these are listed here. So you can see and addresses, sub addresses of these squares will be as follows. You will have A, 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 B, A, C, A, D, C, A, C, B, C, 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 D and uh, all, all, all those things. You, you, if, you, if you just refresh your memories about the addresses, you can easily uh, categorize them into different addresses. And third order, uh, like this blue sub square, if you see here, uh, you will have uh, these BCC, uh, you, you can subdivide, this, this is BC sub square. So BC sub square can be sub further subdivided into BCA, BCB, BCC and BCD. What does that mean? That in successive, suppose some point falls in BCC, that means it had a moderate fall, it had a moderate, uh, sorry, moderate gain, followed by moderate gain, followed by moderate fall. So this the, the, the data sequence goes this way and the addresses go this way. So that, that is how we uh, designate all those things. And uh, this uh, smaller further sub smaller you can see this pink uh, sub square which is a third order sub square. It can be further subdivided into uh, as you see this yellow one is a BCBD. That means that particular index future has a large gain. Next minute it had a moderate fall then it had a moderate gain and then again it had moderate fall. So that is how these things would uh, vary. And we uh, analyze this uh, for like, this is Hong, so Hong Kong uh, index, Hong Kong fund, this is called Hang Seng. Hang Seng funds is uh, from Hong Kong. So we did that uh, analysis and this is the usual variation in the Hong Kong funds from August 19 to May 20. So it's about uh, 10 months of data. And you have uh, these variations, uh, all sorts of variations there, uh, how the market has been gaining and falling. But to look at the successive variations, uh, if uh, we, we, we plotted, we played a driven IFS chaos game and uh, we got these uh, data. This is August to September, two months data, October and November, this is the data, December and January, this is the resultant uh, IFS picture. February and March, you have very, very clear picture, a different kind of picture than December. You see from October, November, December, January, this, this is a almost a random plots you are seeing. That means the, uh, the price variations in this index funds are uh, which expectedly random. But uh, after the, uh, see, uh, what happened? COVID-19 pandemic was declared at this particular point. This was somewhere in January, end of January. And after that market started falling, uh, okay, it, it, fall, it fell, but uh, what was the patterns within successive minute prices? That's what we can see from these IFS uh, patterns. Uh, and uh, you see a uh, very strong diagonal, you are seeing A to D diagonal, which means uh, very, very, the market was very volatile at that time. And it, it had large fall, followed by large gain, followed by large fall, followed by large gain and so on. You didn't have moderate gain and moderate fall, which is corresponding to uh, diagonal BC. And similarly, uh, here also you had very uh, speculative market. Sometimes you have large fall, then again next minute you have large gain and so on. So it's an interesting way of uh, looking at the stock market. Maybe somebody can find a application for this also. Maybe some you, one of you may be able to make money out of this. If you can predict the stock market, what is going to happen in the next minute? So then definitely you will be, you may become a millionaire. Uh, similarly, we also tried that on the Indian uh, stock market, which is Nifty, the, uh, the top 50 terms, uh, for top 50 companies index funds in the Indian stock market. And we again saw these are the period, August and September, October, November, December, January, uh, February, March, April, May. And you see very neat recovery of uh, the Indian market also. During December, January, it is almost random. So Indian market did not have any uh, effect 
at that time it was uh, behaving uh, as usual of course in august september something uh, something else must have happened where you had this uh, volatile market but february march you see the effect of volatility and very very large effect we we have uh, we have gained really really fast in april may after the large fall in after the pandemic and uh, in the the, the lower uh, four graphs what you are seeing what uh, we did was we subtracted this plot from these plots these plots are, so this plot is l minus j so this is l this is j so this plot makes a this is a subtraction percentage uh, plots and uh, this is uh, l minus k sub this this uh, picture subtracted from this similarly this is l minus m so what we are doing is we are comparing the uh, plots just before the pandemic this plot is just before the pandemic was declared and these are uh, see you see a, you see a diagonal here very strong diagonal and very very strong diagonals you are seeing here in this so april may was the was the period of recovery indian indian in the indian stock market futures so uh, this is uh, so that's how we uh, did a little exercise for studying a stock market from the uh, driven ifs and uh, one of the interesting thing what we noticed was the most occurring address in nifty was a a a a that means a, 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 that that was uh, at this time these were the uh, before the pandemic uh, just after the pandemic when market was falling so the, during this this period with the, during, during the period m this is what we observed a a a in continuation was the most occurring uh, address what does that mean uh, large fall large fall large fall large fall that means the market is falling so this is from l m and n so n you see the market has started to recover a a a d a d d a a d d d that is uh, that means d is the large gain so that means after a large fall 3 minutes in succession you have large gains so market has started uh, gaining at that particular moment so this is another uh, way of uh, looking at stock markets and one can really uh, make use of uh, this particular information sometimes in future okay so that uh, uh, summarizes the uh, the application of the driven ifs in the stock market now uh, another interesting application was uh, uh, tried by someone else this is not our work i am quoting somebody else's work uh, it's a, it's a very interesting tool also for analyzing patterns in data so but the binning is very very you have to be very careful how the data will be binned so that is uh, really important how you are going to bin the data now uh, how, how do you analyze texts and, or the literature now a text is a string where and uh, and, and uh, in an alphabet of more than four symbols uh, so it's not four symbols so how do we get four uh, outcome of, out of this so how do we convert this into a string of in an alphabet of four symbols so uh, we need to change these 26 alphabets into some somehow into four symbols there are several possibilities one possibility is that we treat these words as fundamental units of the text the words are the unit not the alphabet but words are one unit and then we assign the bins by parts of speech so grammatically we assign the bins the with which uh, we have some problem like distinguish how much of the ifs structure is due to the author's style and how much due to grammatical constraints so uh, by analyzing text we wanted to see how uh, ts eliot writes how shakespeare writes how mark twain writes or uh, different uh, how premchand writes so the different authors how do they write their texts so uh, uh, but uh, of course all the authors have to confine themselves to grammatical constraints so that is uh, one problem uh, how to uh, decide that another choice would be that we take letters as the fundamental units or the alphabets as the fundamental units and i assign bins by ignoring some letters or we group some letters together on some basis we define a basis that we okay we will discuss we will group a e i o u all the vowels together if the letter is a vowel then it goes to a particular bin so any choice must be justified 
that it reflects the properties of the text. So it always remains a difficult problem and one has to be very, very careful. So uh, we, uh, uh, what the example I am giving you that has been done by a phonological analysis. So phonology means how the uh, words sound, how the letter is, uh, how, what is the sound of the letter. So there are uh, different ways of binning the text. So we, uh, this is in, in, in a, uh, this work was done in 2003 by Emily Rand uh, and uh, studied, who studied the phonological properties in uh, several different texts. So a couple of things they, she took as uh, T.S. Eliot's poems, uh, two of the T.S. Eliot's poems, the love, of, love song of G. Alfred Prufock and Hollow Man. So these two poems were uh, taken and then uh, another uh, poem was taken as uh, Lewis Carroll's. So there are two different authors, T.S. Eliot and Lewis Carroll. Uh, Lewis Carroll's uh, work, uh, Jabberwocky, so which, uh, which do contain many, many fabricated words. In fact, Lewis Carroll was famous for making fabricated words, making new words, uh, to fabricate words. Then uh, they tried to see that the, if the Eliot's texts, these are the poems of T.S. Eliot, uh, then the couple of uh, the, this text, traditional tradition and the individual talent was also taken as from Eliot's uh, text, not the poem. Uh, does it reveal different pattern than the poems? So the different kind of things. It, it is interesting for to see how and these are the categories used. So vowels were taken as A, E or I, O, U, where it, based on phonology, like based on the sound they produce, where they have no vocal, vocal tract friction, mostly sonorous uh, thing. Then glides, categories of glides, glides for Y and W, where the, these are consonantal forms of vowels, uh, I and U, but slightly less uh, sonorous, Y and W. Then there are liquids, which were liquids and nasals, which were uh, liquids were where the friction is caused by the tongue, and nasals are the, the, the letters uh, spoken from, so, sort of, they were spoken through the nose. And then uh, all the other consonants as taken as obstruents, which have varying degrees of vocal tract construction. And then other uh, categories, fricatives, plosives, affricatives, and then these are, so the, the boundary were the word boundaries, which supersede the syllable boundaries. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Uh, so first of all, this, these pieces were analyzed using a four bin IFS with the, with the usual transformations, what we took. And these were the resultant pictures. This was the love song of J. Alfred Prufock, Hollow Man, both uh, T.S. Eliot's poem. Then Jabberwocky was uh, Lewis Carroll's poem. And tradition and the individual talent was T.S. Eliot's uh, text. So you will see uh, the author's difference. These three plots look uh, quite similar, or whether they are poetry uh, or prose. But uh, Lewis Carroll has a different style of writing. It uh, feels like. So the, how, how did we take the order of the transformation? The, they are determined by if there is a T1, you have vowels, the transformation T1. If you have glides, you have T2. If you have liquids and nasals, the transformation, transformation was T3. And all other obstruents were taken as T4. If you remember the last uh, table, so that is how they, we were, def they were defined on, on the basis of uh, this T1. If uh, the next letter is a vowel, then you go to T1. Next letter is a glide, you go to T2. Liquids and nasals, you go to T3. And all other things are T4. So uh, we come back to these uh, pictures of all these uh, four pieces of uh, text. Uh, you will notice a couple of things. In all four, the squares 2, 2, 3, 2 and 4, 2, they are empty. What does that mean? indicates that only a vowel can follow a glide otherwise it's not uh, if there is a glide the two if there is a glide then two three four are not possible only vowel only one two is possible two two three two and four two are not possible so if you have a glide which is two then next letter have has to be one so in one it, it is there in all of them so it's a grammatical constraint probably in all four, the squares 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, like here, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, here, 
थ्री थ्री फोर एंड फोर थ्री फोर आर एम टी वन 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 मीन्स थ्री सक्सेसिव वॉवल्स कैन नॉट अकर एंड दिस टू थ्री फोर थ्री थ्री फोर फोर थ्री फोर मीन्स दैट ए वॉवल मस्ट फॉलो द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ स्टूडेंट देन लिक्विड और नेजर so uh, the these are the these are the things you will see from this so uh, proof of jabberwocky and tradition all have 2 1 2 empty while hollow does not have this 2 1 2 empty where is 2 1 2 2 1 2 2 1 2 is this so this is empty here this is empty here this is empty here but here it is not empty 2 1 2 is not empty in uh, in the hollow manner so uh, so what is the consequence that means glide vowel glide is possible but very uncommon at least among these samples so 2 1 usually it's possible but less likely another thing which we notice the tradition has 4 3 3 empty 4 3 3 this one this one is empty while proof of uh, jabberwocky and hollow they do not have this empty they they do have some points there so in jabberwocky uh, why does the point on the boundary between 433 uh, and 344 belong to 433 so why it goes to 433 that means maybe that distinguishes poetry from prose so maybe that is the way how to distinguish on the basis of fractal analysis now next the analysis was done on a 9 bin ifs the uh, earlier it was 4 bin ifs now it is on 9 bin ifs i'll tell you how the 9 bin rules uh, are defined in the probably in the next slide and you will see a different kind of pictures uh, emerging there uh, all these love again same couple of poetry from ts eliot text from ts eliot and poetry from uh, lewis carroll they all have some similar and some dissimilar patterns and uh, the rules were T1 will be vowels, T2 is glides, T3 is liquids, T4 is nasals, uh, T5 is fricatives, T6 is affricatives, T7 is plosives, T8 is syllabic boundaries, and T9 is word boundaries. So that is how the nine bins were defined, and uh, these are some of the analysis. Uh, I don't want to go into details of this analysis; uh, that will take uh, too much time. But yes, one can always look at these graphs and. do some analysis what uh, what uh, which squares are forbidden which are not Th those things one can always see that uh, how these things are uh, uh, how these things are designed so that's what uh, one can always see and uh, design that so uh, well, i'll read couple of them in all four the squares 2 2 3 2 4 2 5 2 6 2 7 2 8 2 and 9 were empty that again the same rule only a vowel can follow a glide in all four 2 3 and 2 6 are empty that means a glide cannot follow a liquid or an affricate as if you have a glide you can it cannot a glide which is 2 it cannot flow, follow a 3 which is a liquid or follow a 6 which is an affricate so these kind of rules uh, one can always uh, uh, find using these uh, driven ifs okay and the nine bin ifs rules were you know, see you have to define the rules also t1 will be move the, uh, the reduce the everything by x by 3 y by 3 t2 is x by 3 y by 3 plus 1 by 3 0 so this is 2 this is 3 see you have to define the rules in a way so that simultaneous application of these rules will give me the square back okay so these transformation generate the unit square by dividing into nine sub squares each of 1 by 3 the width uh, of and the height of the unit square now here are uh, these are uh, length one addresses uh, which are uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 and you will see the length two addresses are are on, also on the bottom uh, Uh, bottom of the uh, slide these are length two addresses so that will be 1 1 1 2 1 3 2 1 2 2 2 remember this is 2 so you will have again nine subdivisions in each of these sub squares right so that is what we will see and uh, we will, uh, notice that uh, that uh, we, we we what we learned today was uh, 
the application of driven IFS into stock market first and then to poetry and prose. And uh, in the last uh, couple of lectures, I have already shown you uh, the, the, the application of the driven IFS in the uh, life sciences. And uh, yes, of course, we do have fractals in earth sciences and uh, life sciences. In fact, uh, in all walks of life, uh, life uh, is a fractal. So one can always use these uh, iterative function systems to analyze any aspect of life. And I've given you these uh, three uh, distinct examples from different parts of uh, uh, different parts uh, of uh, human behavior, you can say, or uh, like uh, the literature, then the finance, and then the uh, biology. So one can always uh, have different kind of applications of driven IFS. So now let us see. I, this uh, this will conclude the first part of my uh, course. In the next part, uh, I will be discussing the quantitative uh, behavior of the fractals. So we will be uh, meeting soon. Bye till then.